Welcome friends, welcome back. Big Deno plays, Kingdom Death, uh, Lantern Year 21. We had a wonderful experience last Lantern Year, facing off against the Gambler for the first time. It was such a good experience that it's uh, inspired me to already be ready for the next campaign. So uh, nothing but positive things to say about the Gambler's Chest. The more I dive into it, the more I feel like it's revolutionised the game of Kingdom Death in a way that is... Um, both satisfying and exciting. Uh, we are going into Lantern Year 21 to hunt a Phoenix, and we are going to chase a level 3. I did actually say a couple of things ago that I wasn't going to face level 3 because it's hard, but <clears throat> let me explain my methodology. So next Lantern Year, we will get access to the King as a quarry uh, based on The Awaited, uh, which is the name of the story event. I haven't read The Awaited, so I don't know what happens but one assumes that that's when the king will become available as a quarry. Um, and so we'll probably want to face the king at level one for the first year. Um, and if we look at our collective cognition um, and our settlement victories, you can see that uh, we need five uh, collective cognition to get us to... My plan's failing. Uh, five collective cognition to get us to uh, 46. So. Uh, we'll face a level 3 this Lantern year, and then we'll face a level 2 King next year, maybe. Apparently, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> or we could just be, be more patient. Um, anyway is fine. So, level 3 Phoenix. Um, the second reason I'm going for that, the Phoenix has a very luck-dependent uh, play style. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the level 3 Phoenix does have minus 2 luck tokens, yeah. So two, minus two luck. However, Bellatrix is starting this with 10 luck. So she is critting on a two plus in the first turn with the Qatar. In the second turn, she'll be critting on a three plus. So assuming I can dodge the trap, um, I can basically crit uh, everything, every single hit location. The Croc doesn't have that many crit locations until you get Vaso dilated, and the Smog Singers. Uh, don't provide me much uh, benefit or interest. I'm replacing them for the next campaign. So I feel like the Phoenix is the right option. Um, I assume we can get through the hunt phase. And uh, and if we can, we shall, we shall trim the Phoenix down very, very quickly, I think. Oh, he's three damage too. What a joker. <laughs> uh, let's just get his tokens out. One, two, three damage. Boom. Two speed and one luck. Two luck. Luck, luck. Speed, speed. Great. Um, we have opted to utilize the um, uh, Lantern Festival outfit on Salazar with. Um, the Phoenix set, uh, for real genuine fun, that's going to result in this guy having speed 11. Um, and that seems really interesting, uh, especially with a charge. But let's depart for our hunt phase. Um, <clears throat> so we'll nip over here. Uh, uh. Here. Okay, so when we depart, let's do that now. Uh, we have a shrine roll to make. And we roll a lantern 10. So we'll do that in a second. And we also have uh, this optimism. Uh, everyone gains three insanity uh, on departure. Uh, now, Ronald... Uh, Ronald... He's chosen. No, he's fine. That's right. Uh, manager playing survivors. One, two, three. Insanity. Great. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I have shuffled these, but I'll do it again. Something on top. Don't be bone eaters, please. I don't know if I can handle it. 
Arc Survivor Hunt event for the first Lantern Year event. So that's Bellatrix is doing the first one. Um, we'll get rid of this shrine. Uh, we'll do herb gathering uh, down here. And I do also have partnership, which we gained. And Bellatrix and uh, Ronald are great partners, and they're going to get uh, survival up to the survival limit, which is great. Ark Survivor Hunt event. We need the new book for that. Uh, the Ark Survivor Hunt events have been, I'll say it, underwhelming so far. I've enjoyed the Scout ones, but the Ark Survivor ones, not so much. But I believe they are related to how progressed you are in your thing. So a seven, a foreign feast. Cool. Each face is a delicate. Uh, the event revealer rolls 1d10 and adds plus two for each gourmandist. We don't have. Uh, Gormandist. So we just roll 1d10 and that's it. Oh, two collective cognition. Oh, if we get a 4 to 8 here, it's solving my problems. Come on, Dano. 4 to 8. Come on, Zona. Whoa. Get in the box. Get in the box. It's a 10. <clears throat> Two collective cognition. Uh, we actually just hit culinary ingenuity at this lantern year. Seems fine. Love being me. Hunt event for the Phoenix. Recurring nightmare. Place the survivors on overwhelming darkness and trigger the story event. Thanks for letting me skip everything. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're a good bloke, Phoenix. You're a good bloke. Uh, Song of the Brave, Dumbledore. An eight, suffer one event damage to the arms. I'm like 99% sure, but we'll flip it over. Anyway, L-M-N-O-P. One event damage to the arms. Dumbledore actually has the bleeding token set. So one event damage to the arms. Ronald, a three, gains an accuracy. I'm not even gonna bother with that. Bellatrix, a five. Uh, everyone gains plus one survival from the bold display. Uh, Salazar, a two, gains an accuracy token, and finally Alice. And if you're wondering who the fuck is Alice, Uh, Alice Longbottom was Neville's mum and she got tortured to death by Bellatrix Lestrange. Alice Longbottom. But anyway, that's who the fuck Alice is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Next person down, our third person, is uh, Ronald. Ronald Weasley. Glimpse. The event roller was 1d10. I would like to probably roll one to five, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. See what I roll. It's an eight. All survivors suffer two brain event damage and gain one level of hunt XP. Okay, so manage departing survivors, two brain damage. And then all departing survivors gain one hunt XP. Bellatrix may ponder homicidalism. Not sure I want to do that, Bellatrix, actually. <laughs> Please don't kill anyone else in our settlement. <laughs> Okay, here, another one of these. Baby and the sword, we will just use that as a basic hunt event. And we shall roll 59. I didn't specify, so we could also take 95. 
Force 95. Just a little bit of casual cheating. Grim and Frostbit, and that sounds bad. 59! <laughs> I wasn't going to take it. Uh, oh, Mask Salesman. 59 is Signs of Battle. The event revealer may choose to investigate. If they do, gain one courage and roll 1d10. So this is our fourth hunt event. One, two, four. So Salazar, one courage would be good. <coughs> um, three plus is good. We'll, we'll roll. Let's go Salazar Slytherin. It's a one. The monster ambushes the survivors. Place the event revealer directly in front of the monster. At this point, this may be a re-roll. Um, mind you, he would be the guy to put in front. Because he's got high roll, stone hard and unyielding. And he's got a fuck ton of armour. What's the what's the other options? Oh, actually, it is a three, and here's why. So before that triggers, he gets prepared, which means he can. Oh no, that's when rolling to determine a straggler. That's a shame. I thought you got plus two to rolls on the table. Uh, we'll just quickly do the bold roll. I haven't done bold for a while. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if this is just uh, just an observation that I've made in this thing, but a nine. Gain one permanent strength. Um, but there's been significantly less courage and understanding gains. Not sure why. Not sure why. Uh, so it's one. So I, I'm not sure that I want to use a reroll because a three plus is we get a survival and an eight plus is we get a random basic resource. We're getting ambushed, but yeah, I'm okay. He's gonna go in front of the monster. We're getting ambushed. Fine. Uh, that was there, so we go here and we have, let's hope this is our last one. Bird brain. Uh, roll a dice, if the result is even, move the phoenix two spaces forward. It is odd, move the phoenix two spaces backwards. So he's on the edge there. So we go here. Ooh, dead warrior. Uh, if we have pictographs, we do. Any survivor has three may investigate. I forget what black style does. Uh, do we have a sword specialist over here? Oh. Uh, I'm going to have to look up Blackguard because I don't really remember what it does. I'll just I'll have a look on here. Secret fighting art. Blackguard style. Swords in your gear group gain one. When you block a hit with your sword. Ooh, okay. That's got some value. Uh, we'll just roll a random hunt event. Torment, I'm not really interested in a torment. 24. 24 is food from the mouths of others. Gain one courage and roll 1d10. Oh, she gained the courage. She gains prepared. She rolls bold. She gets a 7 on bold. One understanding. Uh, 
Uh, oh, give us a rock. Or a masticated mess. It's a masticated mess. Gain one random basic resource and two insanity. One, two, random basic resource. Love juice. I don't need more people. I ran out of I ran out of names. I want spells. Started calling people Alohomora. Next we're gonna be going back in uh, one of the death spells, one of the unforgivable curses. Okay. Uh, so that was there. So we now go here, we're back to the top. Uh, we do another random hunt event. Boom. We get 17. I saw a one then and I started freaking out. 17 is face to face. One courage for Bellatrix. Oh. She is also now bold and she rolls a five, which is came in understanding. Uh. We will roll this. We roll seven. The face reminds you of someone dear. If your survival is greater than your insanity, suffer monster level brain event damage. It is. One, two, three. We move on to this face, and then we will then start the showdown. Uh, it will be another random event. It will be 80. And 80 is a lovelorn rock. Oh, I don't want to rock. Uh, who is going to be the straggler? Who can actually afford to take the rock? No one can really afford to take the rock. Maybe the, maybe the Crimson Set, right? Or the Belly Boots, I guess. Let's see who gets it. So Bellatrix a five, and she is prepared, so she's actually a seven. Dumbledore, a five, he is not prepared. Ronald, a 10, he's fine. Uh, four goes to six for Salazar, because he's prepared, so he's fine. So it's Dumbledore at the moment, and it is Dumbledore. So Dumbledore is the straggler, he's gonna pick himself up the level on rock, just going to trash some bandages that we have on him. And that is all. We start the showdown. Uh, let's begin. We'll deal ourselves out some terrain cards. I have a physiognomy. Do I? Yes, Salazar has physiognomy. So we'll be dealing out four random terrain cards. All right, we get... Glowing Waypoint, Acanthus Plants. Oh, don't want Acanthus Plants. Get out of my life. An Ore Vein. I do want an Ore Vein, though. All right. She'll return in a moment. All right. We are all set up. Shuffle the AI deck. We are ambushed. We've been given two um, survival for, oh, sorry, given up to survival for partnership um, for our team. Here is the Phoenix uh, and our setup. Oh, look at our glorious Phoenix there. How beautiful. Great paint job, whoever did that. Oh, that's right, it was me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, draw an AI card. <laughs> Peck. The last threat to wound in range. There is no threat to wound in range. So, we just disdain. Disdain. Place the Phoenix. All non deaf survivors suffer brain damage equal to the monster's level. 
Uh, so Dumbledore, so is anyone going to be lower? And we also end the Phoenix's turn, which is lovely. Um, okay, so Ronald is going to have to suffer a brain trauma. He does have a systemic pressure, which is a shame. So he will roll a brain trauma. He rolls a seven. So uh, this is not an injury. So we don't use top of the food chain. So we're plus two thanks to accept darkness. And we're minus one thanks to the systemic trauma. So we're plus one on the roll which is a brain trauma roll of an eight, which off the top of my head is frenzy. It's lunacy. Gain a random disorder or 1d5 insanity. So he gains three insanity, 1d5, uh, sorry, two insanity, one, two, and a random disorder that he gains is hyperactive. During the showdown, you must move at least one space every round. Fun. Uh, so, we've done disdain, we end the phoenix's turn, spiral age happens, spiral age is gain 4 hunt XP for every thingy token, we have none, so that is all, so we now move on to the next AI card, it is prying sigh, all survivors in field of view. Okay, at this point, we're going to use a survival from Ronald to dash. And we need to survive from Bellatrix to Dash. Uh, so Bellatrix, uh, she will go to there. Ronald, one, two, three, four, five, six to there. Ronald speed seven, so he can go to there. Uh, everyone's going to gain an age token. This has not happened yet, though, so there'll be no rewinds or anything of the sort from this. Uh, now, Ronald and Bellatrix both spend a survival. Bellatrix is going to surge. So is Ronald in a second. Not Dumbledore. So this is the monster's second turn. He ambushed us. He goes first and then he goes again. Um, so what we're trying to do here is knock the monster down which will cancel the rest of this card, which means we wouldn't get the age tokens. Um, but because of Indominal, he's gonna stand up anyway at the end of the attack. But we'll surge, we'll start with Bellatrix. So her act hasn't started yet. Um, so her luck is seven. So the Qatar uh, is hitting on threes, twos rather. One, eight, five. Oh no. Uh, the monster's eye bursts with colour. I don't want to get a random fighting art. Uh, okay, so uh, luck 7, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. So critting on a 4. Um, yeah, it seems not, not as good. That's a crit. So the phoenix suffers one extra. We'll do this one first. The survivor gains one insanity and one survival. We do not wish to spend three survival to get a random fighting art. Uh, so he's going to get knocked back. One, two, three, four, five. This guy's going to go to here. Which will change what we do with him. Uh, before that reaction triggers, actually. Oh, yeah. So that, that one's first. Now we'll try to crit this one. Two is not a uh, crit. But we'll use our Guardian re-roll so that we do crit, hopefully. Uh, the good news is we don't wound. <laughs> so that is ignored. If that doesn't happen, then that doesn't happen. Uh, so Ronald, he's surged, he's dashed, he's in the rear, he's hitting on him anything. Now he has the uh, story of the four hands. So he gains deadly nine and we ignore the monster's luck when we attack with it. It's an impervious hit location. Uh, we crit on a two plus. We do crit. However, 
We didn't critically wound because it's impervious, or did we critically wound? We did. And a small hand parasites location. That is really annoying. That is a really annoying turn of events. <laughs> All right, this happens. Each target gains one age token. If the target is insane, they may spend three survival to gain one courage. Otherwise, the target suffers two brain damage and is knocked down. So Ronald suffers two brain damage and is knocked down. Two brain damage. Ah, oh, sorry. Three survival to gain a courage. No, we're fine. Uh, insane, 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 insane. So that is all. That's the end of the monster's turn. It's our turn. He stands back up. He'll swing again. Seven plus to hit. Oh, no, not seven plus. Two plus to hit. Uh, critting on a two plus. That's a crit. Oh yeah, so we've done one wound there. Oh. And then another wound there. Done. We gain a Phoenix Finger resource. Done. And we can spend two survival to heroically bellow. Uh, this is Ronald. He'll spend two survival. All non-deaf survivors gain plus one courage. Ronald achieved bold. Ronald roll is a bold roll. He rolls an eight. That's plus one permanent strength. And he has uh, stalwart. And his proficiency point. Plus one permanent strength. Uh, and that is actually two wounds because of the uh, surpass. Uh, and his strength is a lot higher than the Phoenix's toughness, which is 17. It's now Bellatrix. It's the start of... Actually, we'll do it over here first. We'll do this guy. We'll harvest the ore vein. We roll seven. That gets us a single iron. I'll just put that there. And then she'll move one, two, three. Actually, she'll just spend a surge to do that. And then she'll tuck into her thing. Into her face. Get out of there. Uh, Dumbly will spend a survival to dash. To there. Um, he'll use the... No, we won't do that yet. We'll move him into that spot there. Then Dumbly will move to there. He'll spend a survival to surge and get plus two to hit locations. And then he will swing his sword, uh, the mighty bone axe, which hits on a five plus and sits on a two plus. He hits twice. He has no luck, but it wouldn't matter anyway. Uh, I just remembered he's got an extra speed. So he hits three times. He's got legendary lungs, so he has to roll again. This is awful. <laughs> Six hits. Oh, no. I didn't really want this to happen, but... <laughs> First strike. Uh, this is all very, very bad times. <laughs> uh, he can't crit at all uh, because he has no luck. So... Uh, the first strike has to go. We can cancel our attack. And on a reflex, we stuff with the destroyed genitals. That is fine. Strength four plus the bone axe is six, which is ten. Uh, and the phoenix... Up to 17. Wow, seven. Uh, this one, that's a crit, but it doesn't count, but it's a wound, so take a wound. Reflex, he suffers the destroyed genitals, and that knocks him down. Gain a bleeding token. 
what is it going? Random disorder. Yeah. Uh, I definitely didn't need to secretive uh, do that, but we gain an axe proficiency. That's a waste of all these great hit locations. Brings us ever closer to the trap. Ah, we'll do Bellatrix. Three speed on the guitar. Three, one, four. Two hits. Uh, at the start of her act, she loses a um, luck, a permanent luck. So she goes down to luck eight. Six, so she's critting on a five. Uh, that is a crit. Which one did we want first? Cancel any other reactions to the end of this attack is definitely the one we want. And gain a random Phoenix resource. Small feathers. Uh, so this reaction will not be triggered. If we fail to crit, we crit anyway. Gain a random Phoenix resource. Uh, does she have anything else with that? So... Uh, so that's one, two wounds. Uh, finally, our survivor with the arc bow is going to stand still and shoot the arc bow. Uh, that is Neville. No, it's not Neville. Neville's not in this fight. It's Salazar. And at this point, I'm going to change this proficiency to bow because ridiculous uh, yeah so rolling to hit with the arc bow six plus plus his accuracy of two is four plus that's a three he fails to hit he's not in the rear we're done um, that's the end of our turn the monster's turn he draws an AI card. He draws Ancient Stare. The last threat to wound in range was Bellatrix. At this point here, Bellatrix will surge. One, two, three. She hits three times. We get one, two, Three. Uh, Qatar specialization. So if, in case we fail to crit. Uh, so this one. That's a crit. Cracked beak ignores the effects of destroyed armor. This one. That's a crit. Gain a random phoenix resource. And a minus one toughness token. He's down to 15, if it matters. This one, that's a crit. Gain two small feathers, Phoenix resources. One, two. Uh, Ronald will surge. Ronald. Yep. Uh, with the Dome Buster. Hits on an 8. And it is... Oh, another. Another impervious hit location. He smashes it. Uh... Tail feathers and small feathers. Why? Why has that happened, Ronald? <laughs> Is there any small feathers left? Tail feathers, small feathers. Done. The Phoenix continues with this. Bellatrix gains an age token. We materialize and intimidate the target. Now, we'll probably... 
dash at this point as well. Uh, just in case I forgot to spend it. Um, yep, so we'll just dash to here. So the materialize happens and goes here like this. Materialize, yep. And on a two plus, we're intimidated. It's a three. Does she have anything to prevent intimidation? She does not. So, suffers one brain damage per monster level and is knocked down. One, two, three. She's knocked down and she also gains eight. Um, Hunt XP from the Ancient Stair. It's the end of, out of the monster's turn. She then stands up thanks to Fist and Tooth proficiency. She's earned a proficiency point. Dumbledore, Ronald, Salazar, Alice. Uh, it's our turn. We'll do her. Bellatrix. Swing the guitar. Three hits. Oh, back an hour. Uh, we don't have any age tokens. Uh, she does lose another permanent luck at this point. We will do it in this order, so we can cancel this. I uh, don't know what we're critting on now, but 5, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We're critting on a 5. So that's a crit, gains a minus 1 movement token. Oh, the monster is knocked down. Knock him down, knock him down. Yeah, it's a crit. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, one, two, and death blow. Uh, she's strength a million, so that's a wound. Okay, so he now jumps back up, which is fine. The arc bow, we'll shoot the arc bow, one shot, hits on a five, it is, oh. if the attacker has any age tokens, they suffer rewind. Salazar does have an age token, however, at this point, he should definitely, oh, what's his insanity? Yeah, he'll surge before I did that shot, because I did mean to do this and try and remove his age token. He does remove his age token. He has no age token, so he's going to ignore rewind. The arc bow is winning on a two plus. That's a wound. Done. We're definitely on for the trap now. <laughs> so who do we want the trap to proc on? Uh, no one? <laughs> Zero? Zero people? Probably Dumbledore. Dumbledore moved to there. Oh, look, it's the trap. The attacker is caught helpless. Perform basic action, targeting the attacker. Ignoring... Any hit rolls. Trap avoided for that was a good outcome. Uh, basic action. So, Dumbledore doesn't have high roller. I was kind of hoping we'd proc it on. What's the name? Uh, Dumbledore has Desperate Strike. Stoneheart's good. Speed on the basic action is... Uh, four, hitting on a two plus. Lots of hits. 
lots of hits. Four hits. Uh, each of these is five damage. We can't do anything about it. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, body, body, waste, waste, waste. So we've got three severe injury rolls, which is probably enough to kill us from bleed tokens. So it's likely that this is going to be the end for Brave Dumbledore. It's okay. I'd really love to go and steal his, his fucking stats before he dies. <laughs> yep. Uh, so three severe injury rolls. I mean, I think he dies anyway. He's minus three, plus one. He's got no torment. He's got two torment, but no systemic pressure. So he's minus one on this roll. It's dead. Dumbledore's dead. He can use his re-roll, but four goes down to three. Uh... That's two bleeding tokens and dead. Dumbly, you were brave. You did your best. That's the end of Dumbledore, but it's not the end of our turn because um, it is the end of our turn. Monster AI card. It is Anal Torium. Well, 1d10, a random survivor in the blind spot is pulled in. There is no one in the blind spot. I have definitely forgotten to do his basic action on his turn at the end of his turn, haven't I? Ancient stare, pitying sigh. Yep, definitely forgot to do basic action. Uh, the closest threat in range, it is Bellatrix. Goes to there. Bellatrix gains an age token. I don't think this would have had a massive... Amount of, amount of difference, but Bellatrix has evasion six. Uh, the only hit we'll take is a seven using high roller. There's no after damage effects. <laughs> Bellatrix's turn. Bellatrix will swing with the guitar. She loses a permanent luck. hits three times. First strike, she'll use a seven from high roller. Uh, and that does a crit, so the Phoenix gains minus two accuracy. Done. Wound. Uh, critting on this one, hopefully. Four is not a crit. Do we use our... We've got a Guardian reroll. We'll use the Guardian reroll. Really want a resource. Oh, no. Oh, just had a light blowout. Explosion on one of my lights. Uh, is that still a wound? Yes, it is still a wound. And the death blow, it's a wound. She will surge. Three hits. Feathered body, feathered back, oh. and this bad boy, uh, those accuracy tokens stay in play. Uh, we will ignore the reaction on this one with guitar specialist and uh, critting on a, I can't remember, but a five, is it a six now? Six minus two, four. Yeah, it's a six now. Uh, it is a wound, but we ignore that reaction. Thanks to Qatar Specialist. Critting on this one. That's a four. It's still a wound. It's not a failure. 
and critting on this one. Six is a crit, going to random Phoenix resource. Running out of Phoenix resources. Uh, everyone was supposed to get a survival at the start of the turn. <laughs> start of the fight, start of each thing. Uh, this guy is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six into that spot. He's going to swing with the Dome Buster. He hits on an eight. It's this. I don't. Oh, yeah, he crits on a, anything on a two plus. Two plus. That's a crit. Does two wounds. One, two. Uh. He's critically wounded a location, so he goes there. He'll erase that, and he'll go there. And then he will spend a survival to surge. And uh, see if we can do it in this. He hits. It's impervious again. What a joker. He crits. Some more small hands. No wounds, the arc bow shoots, the arc bow hits, it's soft and pale. I don't think we can crit this location. That's a one. Uh, we've used all of our uh, guardian rerolls, haven't we? So we've got no guardian here, Salazar. Stoneheart, Unyielding, Alice, Guardian twice, yep. So that is a one, that is a failure. Do we want to re-roll that wound or are we, are we not worried? We're probably not worried at this point. Yep, that's fine. It's the monster's turn. He flips this Ancient Stair. Uh, at this point, we'll spend a survival to surge on Bellatrix. Just need to do one wound. Hit three times. Oh, no trap. We'll try and crit first, though, yes. Oh, we'll try and crit the impervious, actually. We crit the impervious and we get another tail feathers and small feathers. Is there any feathers left in the... <laughs> there is a tail feathers left. And then we'll try and crit the other one. It's a crit as well. Okay, and a random phoenix resource. The phoenix is dead. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Do we gain we didn't use Grimjaw. She doesn't have this thingy set, so alright, so we've got to shuffle these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've we we fell short of absolutely decking the Phoenix by two. Two things we didn't get. <laughs> Yowza! Six basic, a black lichen, hide, two, ooh, perfect organ, three, four, five, perfect hide, nice. Six, monster bone, black lichen and a phoenix crest, strange resource. Lycan, Phoenix Crest. It's a haul. It's a haul. Now we have innovated face painting and we paint our faces with Phoenix blood on a 5 plus the survivors howl in pain. All survivors gain the timeless eye fighting art. So on a 5 plus it's a 3. That's good. It avoids me having to do systemic pressure rolls. So we can gain plus one hunt XP. Um, and we gain two weapon proficiency points. 
Uh, Bellatrix gains two, one weapon proficiency point. Ronald gains one weapon proficiency point. Salazar gains one weapon proficiency point. Alice did not gain any. We will complete the showdown. We will gain one hunt XP, three collective cognition. It's a shellacking. Mind you, when you are critting on a 2+, 3+, 4+, 5+, 6+, Makes the game a fair bit easier. Dark Trader. Unless we get something crazy, we'll definitely take a Dark Trader. Skull Eater. We'll take Dark Trader, thanks. <laughs> the Away Dead. Um, yeah, that, that, that showdown went exactly how I expected. There's no, there's nothing surprising about that. Um, you know, we've got, oh, I forgot I need to get an indomitable resource as well. Um, yeah, oh, we didn't quite, we had four. Uh, indomitable Phoenix resource. Violet droppings, violet armor charm. Interesting. Awaited. Not having a showdown god hand. Showdown, showdown, the awaited. Here he is, the king. Oh, a little bit of booty there. I like it. Woe spreads from the primordial origin within every survivor. Wailing sobs for a combination hand. That's awesome. The survivors experience the hopelessness of prey cornered by their predator, seeking a prize sample to check the maturity of the settlement. Ah, oh, what? Ah, oh. oh, that's f fucking bullshit. <laughs> that's bullshit. Ah, oh, Bellatrix is dead. Hang on, let me count. Uh, four and four is uh, six, ten, nine, twenty-three. Oh, it's not Ronald. Oh, that sucks, man. <laughs> so he, he's pulled the, the highest, the person with the highest number of um, attribute things. I mean, so it, it's, well, it's okay because I was going to lose her anyway, but we we're at the point where um, she was about to retire. Well, I wasn't expecting her to retire, but I was thinking I'll be able to hold on to her for another two fights, use the luck, and then she can just sit in the camp and she's not going to murder anyone. Um, but, yeah, okay, she's dead. I forgot to do herb gathering. Um, all survivors gain subjugated. You may now hunt the king. All survivors gain subjugated. Wow. Okay. The king. What's subjugated again? I'm going to look at my actual card on the disorder. I think it's if you're knocked down or something, or you're knocked down when the monster does something. There it is. Subjugated. When you are knocked down, you are dominated. Oh, what's dominated mean? When you depart to hunt the king, remove this disorder. Okay, well that's good. Dominated. Uh -huh. Cannot be encouraged or fist pumped. Yeah, it's it's actually that's actually pretty pretty piss weak because 
Um, we've got fist and tooth proficiency, so we just jump up at the start of the turn. Hmm. Could be worse. Uh, I'm not going to worry about doing that with everyone. I probably should do it with some people, I guess. Disorders. Uh, what was it called? Subjugated. Okay, so we've done all of our things that we need to do. We have some pondering to do, unfortunately. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your perspective. Uh, our returning survivors, Alice, she has moved up to hunt XP4. And so she is going to uh, ponder facism. No, fond, ponder dreamism. And she gets dreamism level two. You reverently meditate at the dreamer's feet, even though he's no longer there in the settlement. You roll a 10. Gain a population, gain a courage, gain a loomy. Oh, I would have preferred gain a loomy, gain a loomy, gain a courage. And another population, sure. Got population to burn. We've actually got too many at this point. Uh, Ronald. He is not doing any pondering. Salazar, he is pondering the level two of fascism. He rolls a one. And he gains the disorder secretive. That seems less than ideal. Done, done, done. Okay, so let's add the new monster knowledge, which is the king's knowledge, to the collective cognition deck. And that is called... Actually, what is there? It's not, it's not a monster knowledge, it's something else. Collective cognition milestone. 46, it is. Gain the Supreme Cuisine Innovation. Oh, cool, put that there so I don't forget that. Innovation, Supreme Cuisine. There it is. Returning survivors gain plus two loomy. that automatically add it? It did. Your app is incredible, scribe guy. Oh, next, next year's the luck story event. Fuck yeah. Let's, uh, let's put some stuff into storage, shall we? Monster style. Gain its meal gear card. So let's have a look at who we can get meal gear cards for. Uh, two, four, six. We can gain meal card for the croc. Seven, eight, and not the phoenix. I don't know what the meal gear card does. Let's have a look. Seed pattern gear, outskirts, pattern gear, meal gear. Fatty crimson goulash. You cannot remove bleeding tokens. When you gain a bleeding token, add four to all hit locations. Oh my god. <laughs> that is incredible.
incredible. That's got that's got some potential, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Oh, I love this game. I love this game. Okay. It's king time. We shall hunt the king. We shall go very hard on the king. Uh, I've got I've got so many survivors. Like I, I could have another two or three survivors that I could make at any moment. So, uh, but before we do, we've got twelve endeavors. It's all happening. Um, let's put in our let's put in our storage in our gear storage. Oh, that's right. I've got the violet droppings as well. Violet droppings. When you gain this card, gain the Violet Armor Charm. This is another something. <sighs> okay, we'll have a look at that soon too. Let's get ready to rumble, Black Skull. Phoenix Finger. Hollow Wing Bones. Muculent Droppings. Muculent Droppings. Muculent Droppings. Pustules. Phoenix Wisp Whisker. Rainbow Droppings. Hollow wing bones, tail feathers, small hand parasites, pustules, tail feathers, small feathers, small feathers, bird beak, tail feathers, small feathers, phoenix finger, tail feathers, small feathers, phoenix finger, bird beak. Basics. Love juice monster bone. Perfect hide monster organ broken wing. Wow. Man. On a tear. Perfect organ. Boom. Monster hide. Boom. Broken lantern. Boom. Monster organ. Boom. Perfect hide. Boom. Monster bone. Boom. Love juice. Boom. I'm going to spend bone hide organ for an innovate. And our strange resources, Phoenix Crest, Black Lichen, and Iron. We'll also do a Black Lichen roll uh, on the Gaming Gazebo location, which is a game session. So we'll do that roll. And we don't want to spend any Lumi. We roll a nine. Have a look at that. Gain one lucky dice. Cool. So we traded our black lichen for a lucky dice, basically. Okay, <laughs> let's go and have a look at this Violet Armor Charm, see what that does for us.
hatten wir hier Violet Armor Charm, there it is. That's incredible. That is like actually incredible. I must be I must be wrong, surely. Let me let me think about that. <laughs> let me make sure I'm reading that right. Add two to all hit locations wearing feather armor. At the start of your act, roll 1d10, add that amount to all feather armor. So every time your turn starts, you roll 1d10 and you add that much up to the maximum. You're unkillable. You're a new unkillable tank. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Whatever you say. Um, let's do our innovate. <laughs> I'm, I'm tripping balls at this point because I've never, I've never seen any of this stuff and I'm like, I, I can't lose. How do I ever lose a showdown? Records. Unlikely. Scarification. Bed. Bed seems like a most probable bed. We'll take bed. Yeah, at this point, it's just like, what? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop now, and I'm gonna go and have a think about the uh, the plan. So I shall return. Okay, <laughs> that was a very long and uh, it's probably been about an hour and a half <laughs> uh, of just mulling. So let me let me uh, talk through what I did. So I've built us a lantern cuirass. And I've also uh, built us a monster tooth necklace. So that's um, going to go on Neville, our optimist. Uh, so if we go back to optimism, uh, Neville needs to be uh, the highest armor value. So because of the way that I've laid this out with the rawhide headband, lantern festival mask, uh, etc., there is zero movement penalty. We are using clothed and satiated. We are gaining a survival when we depart. We're gaining two strength from the monster tooth necklace. And then we're also gaining one strength, one evasion, and one movement from the lantern festival mask. He's also got the beacon shield and that's his main weapon that he'll be looking to use. Uh, so uh, he will leave with um, the most armor, which will trigger his um, neuroses, uh, so he will gain survival up to the settlement's survival limit. And on arrival, he'll gain two reroll tokens. So I feel pretty good about that layout. Um, I would like to have the dome buster on him as well, um, but uh, that's not going to happen for a little while. Uh, he's also got unyielding, he's got sword and shield specialization, he's got guardian. Um, yeah, so he's he's going to be pretty good. He's also got a luck, so we're looking for the beacon shield to try and get some crits. Ronald is wielding the Phoenix set, so we made a crest crown using the Phoenix crest, and we also made the Violet Armor charm. So uh, this guy, um, thanks to the um, oh yeah, the crest crown. Uh, when you depart, gain insanity and survival for every blue you have. So he's gaining two insanity and four survival when it departs, which is glorious. Uh, we're plus two movement from the Phoenix Gauntlet. And um, yeah, so look, the way, the way that this book is worded, and I'm not going to state that I 
No, because I don't know, but stories and tall tales. Uh, the story of the hunter's arrow, the story of the four hands, and the story of the gloaming. We have read all of those stories uh, and all of those knowledges, and every single one of the knowledge says, your story ends. So I haven't looked at the book, but the story ends. Read champion rank four. So... I feel like that's not a good thing. <laughs> so I'm expecting that Ronald is going to die. So I think we're going to use Lupin to just nom him before that happens. But um, in the meantime, he's just going to shoot the arc bow and then he gets to choose whatever hit location he wants from the deck. And then if he goes up and punches with fist and tooth, he will also get to critically wound on a 2+. plus. So... Uh, feel okay about him. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty good. When you gain a token, suffer one damage to a random hit location, blah, 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 blah. He's, he's about to die, right? I'm going to kill him. We're going to use all of these beautiful positive stats and we're going to give them to Remus Lupin, the werewolf. And he is wearing no armor. <laughs> werewolf! <laughs> Because he has Razor's Edge, which is when you have no armor points, your attacks with melee weapons gain Devastating 1. His melee weapon that he's going to wield is the Dome Buster. So, Dome Buster is going to be Strength 15. Uh, he's going to have plus 1 luck. He also innately has a luck. So, he's going to be critting on an 8 with the Dome Buster. Um, and because of that, he's gonna, it's going to be devastating. So if he if he manages to get um, Dome Buster off, he'll do three, three a swing. Um, I have not got the Frenzy Drink anymore. I'd love to give him the Frenzy Drink and just juice him up and go, wah! <laughs> but we haven't. Um, so that's, that's a bit of fun. Lupin's going to murder some people and have a good time. Uh, Rowena, we're going for an interesting approach here. Rowena's just going to use the uh, leather skirt or leather set and the lantern festival stuff. So you're not actually getting any bonus out of that other than for evasion, which is a decent bonus <laughs> uh, for someone who's who's trucking around with two and eight. Um, she's not going to have any survival, but we're going to try and just use her to dash and surge block and then run around in front of the uh, in front of the guy. Seems okay. Um, and we want to try and level up all for one. So that's uh, all I did in terms of build outs. Um, yeah, and I, for Ronald, we made the Violet Armor Charm. So this arc bow situation is that it's, it's a really good weapon. Um, we'll probably slide it over onto another survivor at some point. Yeah, so. What I really want is a homicidalist that, that uh, sorry, someone with dark impulse that isn't a homicidalist because I don't really like everyone getting killed. Uh, to do that, I need to, to make leather. So we made leather. Um, I did a nightmare training to increase that. I did some bone beats to give uh, more insanity. I've left five over so that I can use the um, uh, protein training on someone. And that's pretty much all we got. Oh, I, can, I could turn into a statue, couldn't I? Skip the next hunt and lose a knowledge. I wonder if it would be out of, out of the realms of appropriate for us to have a statue that says, murder your mates. <laughs> oh, homicidalism. What a lot of fun. What a lot of fun. Okay, so the knowledges that we are going to take are... Stoneheart, man, it's such, a, it's such a good ability to flip that because it's just so powerful to get plus two to severe injury rolls. Sculptor's Apprentice, that's awesome, but it does mean your dude dies. Oh, maybe we buy that for old mate. You know what it does? It adds plus nine to all hit locations. So you're basically unkillable for the showdown. And then we just neck him, kill him before the end. Hardy Ego, don't care about that. Tumble, really don't care about Tumble. Maybe I'll put it on someone just to try and level it up. 
and Cyclops D. Yep. I don't know why I flipped five, so forget that. Stoneheart. Who's got some loan Lumi and wants to buy Stoneheart? Costs five. Mm. Alice. Stoneheart on Alice. Is that a good option? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I'm bringing out uh, a collectivist because I realise that I don't have a collectivist that's levelled up. So Rowena is our collectivist. She's going to try and level up all for one and see what happens when we get collective collectivism uh, levelled up. See what cool abilities it's got. That's it. Um, this year, departing survivors gain survival up to the settlement survival and plus two strength tokens. So that's a wonderful start for culinary ingenuity. We also compound that um, uh, with the new departing benefits, which we have. Um, departing survivors gain four survival. Oh, our, yeah, our survival limit is now 16, by the way. So that is outrageous. We're going to depart to face a king. It's the next Lantern year. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you again soon. Big dinner. Oh.